Thanks for staying with us. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing powering the Nigerian healthcare sector. And we still have Mr. Folabi with us. Um, there's a lot of problem in our healthcare sector. And I know that, you know, just fixing the power um, challenge alone takes off at Part least 60% of, of the burden. Of you know, fixing fixing the power sector. Yes. Um, so, do we have Mr. Folabi with us? Okay. So, um, but bottom line is, mm -hmm. um, before he comes back on the show, yeah. Have you ever experienced hospital? No. <laughs> you... Frankly speaking, no. Oh. I hardly fall ill. But oh. the key thing here is this: that we should understand something is, the earlier we resolve the issue with the power sector in the healthcare sector, the better for us. You know, the thing is, why ask the question? Because a lot of people think that you have to, first of all, go through it before you see, I mean, before you see a problem and you try to fix it. Because people are always making this argument that if our politicians and our leaders, if they use the facilities and maybe they experience those kind of things, maybe it would have been easier to change it. But I, don't, I, I, I beg I, to differ. Yes. You know, I beg to I differ for that, you. you know, that school of thought that I, I don't have to go through it mm -hmm. for me to know that there's something wrong and for me to fix it. You know, this is a basic thing. And that's mm -hmm. why I will still go back to COVID-19. I am so happy. Mm -hmm. I am sad that a lot of people have died, but I'm so happy that something like this has it's come. Happened. And you know what I've said, that if this doesn't wake up, wake us, wake up, us up, I wonder what will ever wake Nothing else. us up, you know, in this country. Because else. now we're seeing, it has exposed a lot of challenges, you know, a lot of in challenges. all the sectors we've all practically talked about, education, everything, um, health sector, power, even, everything. Even the, the non-sectors, mm -hmm. social life, you know, mm -hmm. families, we're seeing a lot of a lot of you know um, violence. violence more you know and thankfully tomorrow we're discussing you know violence I families were talking about violence you know there's a lot of so yes. there's so many things that will burden you know us as individuals mm -hmm. so i'm so happy that you know all on is bringing solutions because to for me point. anybody that's able to solve a problem you know and he was saying something about bringing in more so what this i mean one of the biggest challenges is finding the companies because they are also looking for companies that they would invest in they are not the people doing the solution they are just investors impact investors so imagine if we now get more companies so this even tells me that mm -hmm. there are business opportunities you know within you know so you can take up these challenges to say okay you know what i want to find solutions now where i would like to ask um mr falabi if he comes back the bottlenecks in terms of government policies, right? In terms of government policies. Because what this means to me is I can take on the whole of Magodo, for instance, mm -hmm. and say, you know what? I want to take Magodo off the, the grid. grid, you know, and let them come on the solar um, solutions mm -hmm. and power the entire community, you know. So if we do that, maybe truly, truly would now find a more sustainable, uh, what's it called, solution. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so and I think we have a follow okay. back. You're going to say something. Yes, I said another thing that actually um, um, caught my attention was when he said something about um, solar home system. Mm. So if we have solar home systems, another thing is about affordability. Mm. Well, I want to ask Afolabi, um, if you can hear me, Afolabi. So we were talking about even the lockdown, right? This lockdown that happened, if they say tomorrow there's going to be another lockdown, we'll be in problem because already there's a huge burden. I mean, every day now in my home, I have to call an electrician. I have, a sol I have solar, I have inverter, I have generator, but I have to call an electrician because it is one spark you're hearing. You, I mean, you're seeing a spark from the transformer. So there's a lot of burden even on, on the current electrical, um, what's it called, um, structure that we have. Even if it's epileptic, there's still a lot of burden. You know, so how do we even start to um, engineer the minds of people? And I was going to ask you about bottlenecks. If we say, okay, you know what? I want to get myself off completely from the, um, national, the, grid. the national grid. And I, I just want to focus on, you know, maybe looking for one of your companies that you invest in to just come and power my community, maybe like a, 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 an estate, you know. Is that going to be Five possible? Five seconds of what you said. I think it became muted. Oh, you lost me. I still can't hear. Oh, he oh, cannot yeah. hear me. 
So I, I think they'll try to find um, a solution. solution but to that. that is the kind of solution that I am looking at, you yes. know, where I would say, you know what, I want to power Ikeja. Mm -hmm. You know, you would say you want to power Lagos Island. Mm -hmm. And we start, maybe when we do that, the burden will be less and we'll now truly you know, find a more sustainable solution. solution. I suppose everybody going to Ikeja Disco and Jenkos and all the Jenko oh, cocos. <laughs> but another thing is this, that the health sector has a lot to offer us as Nigerians. Mm. The LL, we as a people and uh, a government come together to, you know, find a sustainable solution to this problem, the better for us. Definitely. I keep saying this because we have so much potential in Nigeria, so much to mm. give. But at the end of the day, because of the leaders we have and because we have so much challenge in, uh, like as um, Steve Harris said, if you can survive in Nigeria alone. You can survive anywhere. You can survive anywhere <laughs> in the world. So he, he actually put hit the nail on the head when he said that. So the health sector is something that we need to actually look Definitely. at. Yes. All right, so Afolabi, if you can hear me, I was saying that there's a lot of burden on the, on the normal the electricity supply that we have right now because of the lockdown and if they say okay there's going to be a greater lockdown and you know because of the numbers are not falling the numbers for covid-19 keeps rising by the minute so they say they are going to, there's going to be a lockdown you know is there a possibility for for community so for instance an estate maybe in lagos island will say you know what we want to take ourselves off the national grid. We want to just find one of the companies probably that you invest in. Come and power the entire estate. What would be the bottlenecks in terms of government interference with such kinds of plans? Because I see there will be a lot of problems. Yes. Um, well, currently right now, the as you know, the, the country um, uh, power distribution in the country has been shared among um, anything between I think eleven or or 12 uh, different um, discos across the, the entire country. And um, I think the one for Lagos, you've got Ikeja Disco and Go Disco. And um, every inch of Lagos State, for example, is uh, is covered by either one of those two discos. Now, they don't cover every single, uh, they don't supply to every single uh, home within the states. They are part of the states. We do not have either a Keja or a Go Disco service at all. Um, um, and, and the discourse from, from past experience may not be very willing to have other, other companies come into their areas and, and, start, uh, and start putting up shop and start supplying power. There, they are, they, 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 we, there, is still a, there are still a number of, 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 uh, of things which have been, been, been discussed in terms of what, where does the legal power of one entity start and, and the rights of the other and the rights of the other stop. But in terms of mini grids in Nigeria, most of the mini grids we have in Nigeria currently are mini grids which are in areas where the grids do not operate at all. So you've got communities in Nigeria which have never seen um, a Nepal grid at all, or PATN grid, or uh, any, any disco grid at all. And this, this, these mini grid companies put in place a 100 kilowatt. 150, 80 kilowatt um, uh, solar powered mini grid connecting each of the homes between those homes, selling power to those homes, and all of those homes are on power today. Um, currently, right now, there are discussions and quite a bit of progress between mini grid companies and also discos because up to a year ago, they were not agreeing with each other. But I think right now, the discos and the mini grid companies are, are starting to see that they do not necessarily have to be, have to have a competition, but they can be a partnership be, between the two of them. So, so, so we're actually beginning to see a lot of dialogue between mini grid, mini grid companies and also and also discos. And a few solutions, are, a few models are being are being created as we speak. Uh, to, to, to ensure that maybe both the two of them can actually create solutions to ensure that communities have power. The NEC, the Nigerian Electricity Regulation, Regulatory Authority uh, Commission, has also put in place policies and, and, and guidelines to guide the, the interface between mini grids and, uh, and disco. So, so currently, um, the discos may not be very happy if you go to their prime customers and say you want to supply them power. But I think in, for other areas which are not the, the core areas of the, of the discos, which are areas which are either on, on the periphery of the operations, there are a lot of opportunities for mini grids and the discos to actually partner and create solutions. And sometimes, even within the, the, core, the core areas of operations, within the, in the middle of the city proper, you have solutions which have been, which have been 
created. For example, there is the partnership between um, Abuja Disco and, the, and one of our investees, uh, GVE Projects Limited, where they are partnering to power the, um, the Wuse market in Abuja. So actually, the, 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 the Wuse market is a major market in the Abuja area, and the two and the two entities are partnering to create a, a, a joint a, a combination between solar 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 power and also grid power to to ensure that that facility gets at least 22 to 23 hours of power every day. So I think models like that have been created, and in time we will probably have um, such work come coming to a to a house, a street, or an estate near you. Interestingly, Isi was going to ask you about that collaboration, exactly. so, but you just hit the nail on the head. Were you going to ask? So I would move on to another question, which simply says that how can solar panel, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. So how can solar panel, which is a nation, an alternative grid for, sorry, an alternate solution currently for, um, to boost, for electricity to boost the healthcare sector or system? Okay, um, solar panels to boost. No, basically, uh, the key challenge we, we, which, which we're trying to help resolve for the, for the health sector um, is basically power supply. And power supply can come through a, very, a, a variety of means, one of which is uh, the solar power. So basically, you need the solar panels. There are two, two, two core, or the, about 95% of the cost are basically your, your solar panels and your battery. Because if the panels captures the, the 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 solar power f from the sun it has to put that power into into a battery and that battery can then come up at night because there is no sun at night and can and you can then use the battery that power which has been stored in the battery for at night when, when, when the sun doesn't 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 shine so so that is one option and it, as i said earlier it is becoming increasingly more cost effective uh, currently right now uh, it, it is actually if it, it is actually cheaper more cost effective than actually using diesel today is more cost effective than actually using petrol today. Uh, it is still cheaper than than than, than on grid. It is still, I mean, it is still more expensive than on grid. But of course, you know, you only get two or three hours of that every year, and even that is priced currently at a cost that is lower than the cost of generating power. So, so, so actually, the power, the cost you pay today, the the circa thirty nine per kilowatt hour you're paying today, it is costing from the Genco to the transmission company. To, to the distribution company more than that to generate that power for you. Okay, so, so none of them is making money. Okay, Mr. Falabi, okay, on a final note, what do you think the impact if we say we want to power the entire healthcare sector, ensure that they have 24-hour power supply, how do you think that would impact the nation? Well, that would be, that would be a fantastic solution. It would, it would, it would have... It will have a lot of positive um, ripple effect of, for, for the for the entire country. Uh, the first thing, first of all, it will take away all of that power uh, which which the health, health facilities are currently using, and you can then move that into other industries or homes or other parts of the country. And then you 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 will also find out that this would also help because, of course, if you do this and you don't make this a government-only activity, you find a way to make it a sustainable solution involving also the private sector. And, of course, as you know, the private sector is also critical health space, as a lot of Nigerians are also getting their health from the private sector. It will create a lot of jobs. You will have a lot of... You will have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Nigerians being employed in the solar in the solar energy space, in the renewable energy space. This will create jobs. These people will pay taxes to the to the to, to, to the to the government. And it will and it will also help us as a country in becoming a lot more a lot more energy energy efficient and energy and then and and, and 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 energy secure as a people. Mm. So so it is something with which I think if we can find a way to to make it work. Um, as you know, Nigeria is generates currently very, very little power. The average Nigerian gets 35, 35 times less power than the average South African, for, for example. South African generates 50, 50 gigawatts of power for 58 million people. Nigeria generates five gigawatts of power for 200 million, million people. people. Oh so, so, so there is a lot of, there is a lot of scope. If we give, even if we can triple our, our power supply, our power supply infrastructure from 5,000 gigawatts from 5 gigawatts into 15,000 gigawatts is still less than one third of what South Africa has. Hmm. 
And so if you, if you do that, and we still have solar, if you can, if you still have solar supporting and solar can still give you five gigawatt, it is, a, it is, it is, it is actually, it is actually a drop in the ocean. Mm. You get me? You can't have five, 200 million people using five gig, gigawatts and South Africa with 58 million people that are using 50 gig, gig, gigawatts. Even 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 Ghana is better off. So, wow. so 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 the thing is that it's not either or. Even if you can double it today, if you can triple it today, five thousand times three is fifteen. Ghana, South Africa is fifty. Even if you chop, even if you make it times four today, we still have a long way to go in terms of power. And you know the the, the funny thing with, with power, the man that was using fan before, once he sees he starts having power, he wants to and AC. Yes, so. <laughs> so, 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 so that, so, so that is the that is the that is the beauty of it. It continues to grow, and we've seen a similar experience with our with our telecoms industry, but, where it was only it, 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 it was only Nepal, it was only Nitel, and, and we know where okay, we are. Mr. Malabi, I'm told I have like that. three more minutes, but so quickly, eh? I, I like when I go online and I'm able to research to see in details, right? So there's a particular there are different mm. zones in the US, for instance. Where they have they have categorized, you know, their consumption in terms of, you know, there's a particular hospital, 42% of their power goes, energy goes to heating, you know, heating. Then another one, water heater, another one, cooling, ventilations and all of that. We don't even have most of these problems, you understand? We don't have extreme weather conditions, you know. So can we just, you know, mm. we don't have those extreme weather conditions. So why... I don't know how, how can we drill this into the minds of our leaders that it's actually cheaper if you truly power our, you know, our hospitals so that we have less people. Because what I was trying to look for, what, which I didn't find, like the number of deaths that has happened as a result of power outage, you know, the number of children, people that have died, the number of babies, you know, that could not go into the incubator, you know, those kind of facts. Maybe by the time we have a detailed fact, you know, shit that says, 1,000 people died because there was no power in this hospital. Maybe we'll find a solution. So how do we drill this into our government? Well, I think the first thing, if you say we want to start looking for that data, we may have to look forever, and we may never, ever, and we may never get, start, get started. So I think the first thing is let us, let us even get started. Let us get started. Let us sit down as a people. Let us sit down as, as investors, as the private sector, as the government, and say, what do we need, need to do? Can the government give us all the tax breaks, all the support, all the everything Absolutely. needed for the for the for the renewable energy energy sector to create 500,000 jobs, a million jobs in the next 10 years in Nigeria? For example, we've invested in the we 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 we, we, we we've given some money to the to the first solar solar panel assembly company in Nigeria today. Wow. That was the company that did the Igobi 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 um, National Orthopedic Hospital, Hospital installation for us. Okay. Can we can we find can we decide as a country that all of the fifty percent of the panels coming to Nigeria mm. will be Niger made in used in Nigeria will be Nigeria made? Can we start thinking about how to start having our own battery assembly plant in Nigeria? Absolutely. Can we start looking at all so if you, all of these things I'm talking about are things that can create jobs? Mm. Are things that can that so can it make has a ripple effect we've got, beyond. We've got graduates graduating yes. every day with, with, without jobs to go to. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I think, Mr. Folabi, you really hit the nail on the head. Thank you so much for being a part of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so um, yeah, thank you. we really ran out of time, but he really hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's sit down because these things, are, in the long run, is cheaper for you. And I don't have any headache in my us. home. Exactly. I, I don't have any headache us. in my home. Mm -hmm. Let's just fix this problem. All right, so remember, you can watch a repeat broadcast of this episode at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, watch all our episodes on YouTube. I mean, we have amazing episodes on YouTube. You need to watch them. And it's been a very, very insightful conversation. Keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at We Show Africa or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Innovation is the ability to see change as an opportunity, not a threat. I mean, so I can't drill it more than, more than I can't shout it more than the, than Steve Jobs. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. again as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Remain safe. Yes, so. Mm -hmm.